Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to The Wealthy Sailor. Today we are talking about estate planning. Now, I know, I know, it's something that none of us ever want to talk about. Nobody ever wants to address bad things that could happen in the future. Financially speaking, though, it's a very good idea to at least bring this up and for us to discuss it. So that's what we're going to do. So back when I was 19, I had a co-worker when I worked at a movie theater way back when. And the co-worker was 16 and a half, somewhere in that neighborhood. Um, when tragically both of his parents uh, passed away in a car accident. So he was left um, in the care of his uncle um, who was also in charge of all the money and stuff. Now his family did not have a will, they did not have a trust set up or anything like that. So this young man um, lived for a year and a half, he finished high school. He actually, um, you know, knowing him for this period, he did really, really well for himself considering he went through such a huge trauma right in the middle of his high school years. So the house his parents lived in was about halfway paid off when his uncle ended up taking it. Now, I imagine that what his parents' intentions were, were was that the uncle would safeguard the assets, um, perhaps keep the house in a good state or maybe rent it out or whatever, um, to save it for their, their son to inherit when he turns of age. Because if you guys don't know this or not, Minors can't inherit property or um, or stuff like that. They have to have it in like a trust or some other type of protected legal entity. So the uncle ended up taking this property. He uh, told my friend that he was going to try to renovate it and flip it and sell it. Um, long story short, a year and a half later, all the assets that were passed to the uncle were gone and the property was sold and the money proceeds from that sale were also gone. So when he turned 18, he got nothing. So the reason I want to make this video is because this story is still something I think about. It's been, geez, like almost 20 years. But it's still something I think about because it's a very tragic thing that happened. Um, and I think a lot of parents, myself included, try not to think about these bad things, but they need to be addressed. Okay, so let's say you're in this mind frame, you want to address this. So what are some things you have to consider? One you need to put in writing who your kids are taking care of if you have any everybody always says the same thing like well if something happens to me my wife will take them or if something happens to my wife i'll take them the thing is what if something happens to both of you and it's easy to say like oh well my parents will take them but the thing is is that that needs to be in writing because the other grandparents or siblings or people who are deemed godparents can all make legal claims for custody of your kids. And now you're dragging your kids through this court battle for really no reason um, because these uh, different entities want to uh, take care of their kids. And I'm not saying that the uh, these people, their hearts aren't coming from the right place because they could just believe, look, I'm in best capable or I have this connection with the kid or you know, I was there for this, so I should. But sometimes it's not for the best reason. Sometimes it's because a lot of times any asset you have accompany the child, right? And that's when you have people coming out of the woodwork to try to get custody of the kids because they want, they really want the assets. And this is a point that I try to stress to everybody. Money changes everybody. Everybody. I mean, like the, there's probably three or four percent of everybody who aren't changed by money, but everybody else is. I don't know if you've ever seen like some of these battles over um, when somebody passes away and they don't have a will. I mean, you can go on, watch Judge Judy, and you can see literally people arguing about all kinds of stuff like this. And when it comes to money, man, it just changes people. That's why it helps everybody involved for you to have a very clear cut will. Make sure you have exactly who you want to take care of children. And to be honest with you, this is probably a conversation you have with your spouse or the other parent of your children anyway because um, it's, it's just a hard topic to bring up because although it's not the case in my situation, I assume a lot of times in these situations um, both um, both parents want the, their side of the family to take the kids so I assume it's some negotiating in order to get that worked out but it's a conversation you need to have and if you can't have it with your partner then that's probably a sign. Um, point towards other things that you probably can't talk about with your partner but anyway I'm not trying to get into marriage counseling I'm not a psychiatrist speaking of that disclaimer I am not an estate attorney so every 
state has different estate laws and stuff like that. I'm literally just telling you about some basic things that we would teach people in the Navy that is a good lesson here. So anyway, military members who are watching this, um, if you're getting ready to deploy, they really encourage, and if you're deploying boots on ground somewhere, they mandate you make an appointment with, uh, well, Navy legal. Um, I'm sure Army legal and uh, Air Force legal will take care of other branches, but I only know the Navy side. So, um, And they will try to get you to get a will, a living will, and a power of attorney. So a will is probably the single best document to have. It helps on so many levels. One is that it says who gets what. And a lot of that, you, you might say like, oh, well, I don't really care who gets what after I'm dead. It's like, yeah, but they might. And they don't even have to be nefarious about it. Like when you think of disagreements about um, assets, when somebody passed away, you think, oh, two people are trying to get money. And although that's very true, that's not always true. Um, in some cases, you might have something very sentimental that both kids think that they have a right to and think that you would want them to have. So they're fighting over it, thinking that you would want them to fight over it or you'd want them to have it and this is the best way to do it. Now keep in mind that during this time they're also dealing with the loss of you. Um, and it just, it caused a lot of stress among fans. So the more detail of a will you have where who gets what is really the absolute best thing you can do. Um, I always say that it's bad enough when somebody passes away, you have to deal with the actual loss. You don't need to add financial and infighting to that. You know, just let them deal with one thing, which means that you have to do your job here before you die in order to make sure everything's set up for that. The next thing is a living will. A living will is kind of a weird thing. So I don't know everything about them. I just know the one that I had when I was with the Navy. And what it did was it left instructions on in case I was um, incapacitated, like in a coma, stuff like that. Um, basically, um, like let's say you're, um, you're, you're in a coma and uh, you're not showing significant improvement. Um, would you want to be kept on a respirator or not? You know, do you want to be resuscitated if you die? Stuff like that. Um, and I remember it being really hard on me because when my father passed away, he had a DNR, a do not resuscitate. And um, it was very painful for me because, of course, you know, as a son, like, if something happened to him, I won. But those were his wishes. So it's like, okay, well, you know, well, even if I didn't agree with him, I, it didn't matter. I couldn't override it. So it's like either make your peace with it or don't. But the medical staff there are going to respect his wishes. Um, we had, me and my dad had a talk about this kind of stuff before any of this happened. And he made it very clear he didn't want that. So, um, but, you know, you have to write, like, what you would want in this case you know and they have a bunch of different medical things in there and I don't remember all of them but you know it's something worth at least looking into. Power of attorneys are also very important to have. Now power of attorneys in the military you're taught pretty much not to do them. The thing is that it for for the sake of simplicity there's a couple different types of power of attorneys. One is a general power of attorney which the US military will no longer be giving out to anybody because what they're finding is before somebody goes on deployment, he'll get a general power attorney for, for his significant other. Well, for his or her significant other. The person gets back from deployment, and suddenly the, the significant other's gone, bank accounts are empty, cars sold, all, all kinds of stuff. And I'm really not exaggerating on this. In fact, if you're a military member and you've heard these stories, please leave a comment below because I really think civilians watching this will be like, oh no, that doesn't really happen. But it does. Not often, but often enough. Well, a power attorney in this particular case is basically dictating who gets to make medical decisions for you. And it's kind of important who you pick for it. Um, of course, if you're hit by a car, they're gonna treat your injuries immediately under the, um, there's like an emergency care act thing where they, the doctors can make their best judgment under certain circumstances. But this is more like long-term care. Like let's say, like I said, I'm unconscious and they have two different treatments. Well, they need to sit down with somebody and talk to them who gets to make their calls for you. Now it's usually your significant other. The issue is, is what happens if something happens to your significant other? Well, if you're both in a car accident at the same time, who makes medical decisions for each person? Um, generally speaking, I think in this case, my family, I think 
they would pretty much make good cases. But the thing is that if there is an argument going on, I like the fact that one person's document saying, no, I'm in charge, he trusted me with it, and stuff like that. That's why I do it with my family. Now, the last document is not something the military teaches, but something that I like, and I've heard this rule, and I kind of like it. It's called the, uh, so now I'm dead. And I know it's very sad, and it's very upfront. But what it has in there, it's a, it's a set of documents that has um, all of your accounts information. Um, not so much passwords and usernames, but which lending institutions you use, which banks you use, and account numbers. Um, you have stuff like your who you have your cell phone with and stuff like that. Um, I've included in mine my uh, passwords to access stuff but you don't have to do that because that is a major security thing. Um, and because you have that, if you put that on there, do not type it or put that into a computer in any way. Hand write it onto a piece of paper and keep that in a very secure space. The reason being is because if you do a document thing, then you usually put the word password or PW right before that. Well, I remember reading uh, a couple years ago, they had a uh, piece of malware that would go on your computer and you wouldn't notice it's on there, but it would literally just scan, scan for any documents that have pass, passwords, usernames, emails, stuff like that. And it would just send a copy of that document to whoever is in the malware. So you, you don't want, be careful with that stuff, but you at the very least want to have a copy of your life insurance, homeowner's insurance, stuff like that. So that whoever is left there sort of piece everything together now knows which institutions to call because I remember one of the hardest things to do like you, say you pass away and you have life insurance you tell your partner don't worry I have life insurance well something happens to you well if they don't know who you have life insurance through it could be quite difficult for them to then let that life insurance company know that you passed away you know they have to send a, a death certificate to um, company in order to get the payout so if it takes them weeks to figure it out, that's now potentially, depending on your living situation, potentially that could be weeks with no income. They're already dealing with what you passing and now they have to deal with this added stress of hunting down one of a thousand different companies that could potentially hold your life insurance policy. So definitely have a copy of it available so that they know where it is. Other things I have in there. I have a copy of the deed to my house. I have a copy of uh, my car ownership papers and stuff like that. Um, and pretty much any pertinent information, I mean, like there, unfortunately it's one of those things where I can't tell you everything that you need to put in there. I'm just trying to give you ideas of what I have in mind so that if something happens to me, uh, my partner's set. Now, then once you have all these documents, the will, the living will, the power of attorney, and the now I'm dead paperwork, I like to make three copies of it. I send, uh, I put one with in my house, I have a safe in my house. I keep one with an outside source. So in this particular case, the attorney that did the will and all that stuff for me, he holds a copy of everything. And then in the folders that I gave to everybody else, I put which law firm is holding a copy of the will. And then the file copies with my parents. Um, and again, the reason being is because if something happens to me, um, everybody has a copy of the same document, uh, no arguments, nobody gets to say anything, everything's clear put in there. Well anyway guys, this video went a little longer than I expected, I apologize for that, but we went over probably about 5% of the total things that I've been learning about estate planning. This is just to get you in the mindset of, okay, I should start taking steps, I should start researching it. I'm not an expert on it, I don't mean to give you um, the idea that you have to do anything. I do think it's a good idea for everybody who's watching this to do individual research, maybe call an estate attorney and start thinking about what you want to do should the worst happen. But I, I hope the worst doesn't happen to anybody on here. Well, it, I guess it's going to happen at some point, but I hope it's not for a very long time. Anyway, if you like my video, give me a like or a subscribe or a share. You can leave a comment below. I love hearing from people. Uh, thank you for watching and keep saving.